It's Inktober with Afterglow. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Afterglow episode 85 and in this episode we're going to continue Spooktober a little bit more with Friday the 13th on the NES. This is another infamous LJN game but I kind of like it. I don't think it's that bad to be honest. And uh, we're going to have a guest on the show. Our guest today will be Jenny from the Nocturnal Mysteries podcast and she's going to give her thoughts and memories on this game as well. And you can check all that out right after our music break. And welcome back. Uh, for this episode, I am being joined by Jenny from the Nocturnal Mysteries podcast. Hey. And uh, we're going to be covering Friday the 13th for the NES. And I'm kind of interested in hearing what your thoughts are, because I don't think this game's as bad as what everyone online makes it out to be. Yeah, this game definitely has mixed opinions, for sure, so... <laughs> So uh, what, what was your uh, first experience with it? How did you discover it? Um, I can't remember how old I was, but I was young. Um, I remember we were at a sleepover. At, we always used to have sleepovers with my cousins, um, and our parents would, like, hang out or whatever, right, while we would play video games. Um, and my cousins were those cousins that had, like, every game. So this wasn't a game that I owned, but I first played it at my cousin's house with them. Okay, yeah, I got a similar story. It wasn't a relative, I'll be honest. My, uh, I think it was my grandmother visited a friend of hers, and this friend of hers had a kid that had an NES, and they happened to have this game. And I'm sure if my grandmother knew that this game was what we were playing, she would not have been happy with us. <laughs> That's the way I feel about my parents. <laughs> But uh, we uh, definitely were uh, struggling to figure it out. I didn't even really figure out how to play this game until adulthood. Dude, me too. I think when I was a teenager, I kind of actually figured it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, even as a teen, I didn't really figure it out. It took the internet generation to kind of be like, you know, hey, idiot, this is what you do. I'm like, oh, okay, suddenly I understand. But I never had a manual with this game, which kind of hindered me a lot. Yeah, and same with me, right? Because it was, like I said, I always just kind of played it at my cousin's and never really looked at it. And then I, in my teens, I kind of permanently borrowed it from my cousin for a few years, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right. Still no manual, so it was the same kind of thing, going into it blind, right? So, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's hard. <laughs> it's, it's difficult, but it's also, I think, one of the more unique experiences that you'll get on the NES. Like, it's not necessarily... A platformer. It's not necessarily an RPG. It, it's almost more of like an exploration style game. And that's what I love about it because it was so different from the other really popular games at the time, like your Mario's, your like your platformers, your Metroidvanias, stuff like that. This was something like I'm not good at platformers. Never was a big fan of them. So for me, this was something that I was like, holy crap, I can kind of actually like play this. Yes, it's hard, but I'm not having to jump from platform to platform to platform and dying 500 times. So, <laughs> Right, right. That was my instant like pull to this game was like, oh, it's one of the first games I kind of played that was like, oh, not so platformy, like interesting. And it's also cool how there's multiple playable characters. There's six different players that you can choose from and you can more or less swap between them at will. Yeah, who would you usually use? Did you have a favorite? Uh, I was normally using Chrissy. Yeah, me too. Chrissy or Laura. I would go to Laura sometimes because Chrissy would, like, piss me off because she's slow as hell in that boat. But, um... Yeah, in the other room, that, I was she pretty sucks, much Chrissy. But, like, everywhere else, she does pretty good. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, she uh... Really the, the other player I would use a lot would be Mark. Yeah, Mark was pretty good, too. 
I usually stuck with the girls because, you know, I was a little girl. So <laughs> yeah, I wasn't picky about the gender. I just wanted them to move fast. <laughs> True enough, right? You're too slow. Next. You're too slow. Next. Okay, you're fine. <laughs> That, that's exactly how I choose my counselor, too, because if they're slow on the overworld, it just it makes the game a lot more difficult. Like I can handle a slow rower. Yeah. Just because you're not in the boat a whole heck of a lot. But a slow walker. Oh, dear God. Or like someone who doesn't jump very high. Oh, no. <laughs> right. Right. Need to get over those fucking zombies, man. <laughs> I mean, day, day one, you can kind of handle it, but. Like day two, there's no way. I don't know how anyone yeah. could have the uh, slower speed characters in day two, let alone day three. Yeah, like good for you if you've done it. You're a legend. <laughs> More of a legend than I am because like I struggle having a good counselor on day two. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Like even uh, whenever I was replaying hey. this game, uh, I think I might have gotten the day three once. Yeah, dude, this game is a is a struggle. Like it's tough. So what's your... That's uh, like its appeal. <laughs> what's your path through it for day one? It depends, really. I still, like, honestly, I still play like I'm a child and just kind of run around because I have a terrible memory with games. Mm -hmm. So every... I usually don't play it for a few years, so every time it's kind of new. So I just kind of run around and, <laughs> you know, get excited when I find a note. And I'm like, yay! <laughs> I, my path is usually I hunt down the torch like as fast as I can get it. Oh my god, I remember when I was a kid, I would find that note about like, Jason is weak to fire or something. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, okay, cool. And then finding that damn torch, oh my god, <laughs> would be such a struggle. It, it's a bit of work if you don't know the uh, quick way to get it. And then it is so disheartening. Once you have the torch and you happen to jump and the knife spawns and you grab it, it's like, oh, yeah. oh, no. no! <laughs> Curses. Like, honestly, there were a couple times where it happened to me and I would just reset the game. I'm like, nope, I'm starting. Yeah, over. no, I don't blame you. <laughs> I would, too. <laughs> That's usually my day one path, though, is to get the torch, and then uh, the next time Jason hits up a cabin, go to the cabin, and then after I be him in the cabin, try to, like, catch up to him in the side-scrolling areas. Yeah. Be because I have a much easier time fighting him in the side-scrolling areas than I do in the cabin. I don't know about I you. I find though. he's hard in the cabin, too. It reminds me of Punch-Out, and I struggle with Punch-Out, so I'm like, this damn game. <laughs> So I'm not bad at punch out, but I there is something about his attack pattern to where I dodge too early, and I'll dodge the first strike that he makes, but then he'll make a second one right after, and I'll just pop my head up right into it. It's like, oops, hello. <laughs> like, ow. <laughs> Damn, my brain. <laughs> it's like that. That's oh, and silly. then when you'd finally beat him, and you see that you win, and for like a split second, you're like, no way. Then it's like for now. <laughs> Screw right? you, Jason. <laughs> so for those who haven't played it yet, once you beat Jason, you have to do it two more times. They're split up into like a three-day period, and each day gets progressively harder. Now, day two, I'll go Jason's mom head hunting. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's time <laughs> to take down that creepy damn head. <laughs> Because if you can beat the head in day two, you get the sweater, which uh, cuts all damage in half, and it rounds damage down as well. So certain enemies just won't be able to hurt you if you have the sweater on that particular counselor. Yeah. Which is something I didn't learn until, like, internet era. <laughs> oh, same here. I didn't even know about Jason's mom until the internet era. Like, I Yeah, never... I knew, like, I'd never been to Jason's mom, but my, um cousin had told me that he's like oh yeah he told me about it but i could never make it there and then internet era i made it there and then found out about the sweater and i was like oh jesus <laughs> well i never got the flashlight and the flashlight's what allows you to see in the caves yeah exactly and then internet era they tell you oh you don't even need the flashlight you just look for the chipped rocks and those are all your doorways it's like oh i never realized that it's a kid. <laughs> <laughs> thank you internet <laughs> uh, where were you 20 years ago where was that nintendo right? power <laughs> My best friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's the kind of tip I needed in Nintendo Power for this game. Like, I didn't need to know how many enemies I needed to kill to spawn 
items. I needed to know how to traverse the cave without a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where do how do I get through here? <laughs> but usually day two is where I die. I can sometimes get the sweater, but even then my uh, counselor is hurting pretty bad at that point. Oh yeah, if you if you do make it through day two, you're probably in a pretty hurting state for sure. <laughs> And his attack pattern in the cabin for day two is ridiculous. Oh, it's so hard, man. Uh, like, I feel the like... The amount it's... of times I've died. <laughs> I, I feel like he changes his pattern up. And I've watched people do speedruns of this game on YouTube. And I see what they're doing. And then I'll go to replicate it. And again, I can usually dodge maybe the first hit. But then the second one catches me like every time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's a real pain in the butt. So, um, one interesting thing, I think. Uh, this game really takes most of its cues, I think, from, like, the third movie, maybe the fourth? Mm, it seems to, yeah. But, like, at this point, Jason's mom that we're talking about, she's really just the decapitated head, which uh, I think you see, I want to say, the maybe the third movie might be the second one. Yeah, I can't remember. It's been so long. But uh, he's definitely wearing the mask. You do not get Baghead Jason in this. No, no Baghead. <laughs> Although I kind of like Baghead. <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty cool. I dig it, too. But Baghead wouldn't be as cool in this color scheme as the mask is, so... <laughs> right, for sure. And then the... Uh... I love the fact that you can choose your counselor and you can actually kind of power them up because there's a system to where you can give them items and weapons and swap them back and forth. So if I'm trying to serious run of this game, I'll at least try to give all my counselors a knife. That way, whenever the uh, Jason buzzer starts going off, I can switch to the nearest counselor and at least they've got a knife to work with. Yeah, because being stuck with rocks to deal with Jason is not a lot of fun. <laughs> No, it's horrible. At least with a knife, you've got a chance. Yeah. <laughs> but to do that, you more or less have to do it in day one, because there's no way to outfit all of them on day two. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, as far as uh, favorite moments in this game, what do you like? Honestly, my like my favorite memory moment is the first time that Jason pops up in the cabin. Like, I just remember all of us being like, ah, you know, like being scared at the po at that time because we were kids. Like, you know, mm -hmm. used to freak us out. And still, every time that Jason music comes on and it just makes me so happy. Like, I just love it. The, the sound effect that... Da, 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 yeah. Hits, oh, it's so wicked. I like the title it's screen, so too. The knife going through the uh, eye socket of a mask. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah, it was so unexpected to see a game like this on the regular Nintendo at this time. And that's it, right? It was something so different, so it was, like, really awesome. Yeah, it, it, honestly, it's not a bad game. Like, if you look online, uh, of course, the AVGN had his time with it and everything. And I yeah. understand the review, but I feel like um, a lot of people play this like a lot of other NES games to where they pop it in and they go through the basic controls, left, right, jump, attack, and they never go any further with it. And that's it. It's one of those games that you do need to spend time with to figure out. And, I don't know, some people just... I love this game. Like, I know a lot of people don't like it, but I love the random exploration of it, you know. It just... I don't know. It's just something so different that I enjoy. Yeah, I, I like it too. I mean, we were discussing on Discord the other day... Uh, I was defending some of the LJN games, and a lot of people are like, no, they're all trash. And this is actually an LJN game. It's not too yep. bad. Uh, that being said, LJN only published the game. They did not make the game. Yes, exactly. Which is why it's not so bad. Right. <laughs> Instead of terrible. <laughs> and, and I also do think that of all the um, movie-based LJN games, this is one that really hits the closest to the uh, source material. Like Jaws, yeah, definitely. Jaws is nothing like the uh, source material. No. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, Jaws? He sailed back and forth between two ports. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's that got to do with the movie? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> like, even uh, Batman on the NES, and I love that game. 
Mm-hmm. It is a movie-based game that has scenes from the movie. But it really goes off plot, too. Like, I don't remember Batman going into the sewers in the first movie to get to the Axis chemical plant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they make their own lore. <laughs> Right, and I get why they do it, but man, this game, like, it stays real close to the source material. You're on yeah. uh, Crystal Lake, you're on the campgrounds, he's attacking, you're trying to defend the kids. I, it fits perfectly. It's got the cabin, that's all good. <laughs> uh, the, the only area where I think it kind of swerves a little bit, which they kind of had to, if you're going to have Jason's mom in it, because, I mean, she's a decapitated head. Uh, you, I don't expect the game to just... You know, you go in the room, there's a decapitated head, and there's your sweater you can take. Good job. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> it would be nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, it'd make the game a lot easier. But I see why they wanted to turn it into a boss fight. It gives the game a little bit oh, more for sure. variety. Yeah, exactly. I can get behind it. Although her uh, head, the design of it, it really reminds me of the uh, Medusa heads from uh, Castle. Yes. <laughs> Holy crap, 100%. <laughs> Well, like, it's flying around on its own. It looks like it's got the snakes coming out. Cause yeah, I, she looks creepy. Well, she's got the same color palette I think Jason has. Like, yep. her her face is like the turquoise the color. kind of, yeah. Yeah, and the hair, and... Yeah, it's really cool. She looks cool, like... Oh, yeah, just... I like her design. Giant head swooping in and out at you while you're trying to throw whatever weapon you have at the time. Hopefully heaven, not rocks. <laughs> I, I was going to say, heaven forbid it's not rocks, because you're probably not leaving alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It also Trust depends... Me, the amount on, of times I've made it there with rocks, so oh, yeah, you ain't coming out alive. <laughs> right. It also depends on... Uh, be sure you take the right counselor in there. Like, don't go in there as Debbie. <laughs> don't do anything as Debbie, please, for the love of God. <laughs> right. And, and Paul as well, which... Poor Paul, because he he's the uh, only... Uh, individual of color in this game and his stats I are, know I'm like could we not have made Paul more badass <laughs> his stats are so poor I'm like oh no because I poor mean guy. it kind of fits the horror movie trope the colored person is usually the first to go <laughs> true enough yeah right although there's one thing that uh, they did not have in this game was uh, the counselors having sex in the game uh, but thank god <laughs> that, that, that don't happen <laughs> I'm really glad about that <laughs> Oh, come on, they could turn it into, like, this whole thing to where if a counselor sleeps with another one, and you just instantly lose those two in the quick cut scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that would be pretty funny. <laughs> they're, they're Give me the, a remake. <laughs> they're in the cabin together, and Jason just walks up with a machete and goes through both of them. <laughs> it's like the Jason alarm starts going. <laughs> beep, beep, oh, no. Beep, beep. <laughs> What's that noise? <laughs> Don't stop! Don't stop! Up! 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 What an addition! I'll take it. <laughs> so, did you ever actually um, beat this game? Yes, I did beat it once. Okay, I'll say I've, that once. <laughs> I've never beaten it legitimately. I have done the game genie methods to beat it, but if I'm legitimately playing it, I get stomped on the third day. It's, it took me a lot of internet help and practice, but I have managed to do it once. And honestly, help from my husband, too, because, you know, he's pretty darn good at games, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I, I never had that help as far as uh, my, my spouse. She's not much of a gamer, and if she is a gamer, she wants to play, like, Candy Crush. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just definitely not her type of game. <laughs> right, so... You know, having her play something, you know, like this, uh, it's not going to happen. <laughs> this is a game I wish you could play with that rewind feature. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That, that would, would be awesome. <laughs> then you bring this to Nintendo Online. That would be sweet. I wish they would. Maybe for Halloween. <laughs> like, I don't know how the licenses would work, but man, it would be a fun one. Oh, to bring it'd be on. so fun. Yeah. That and, you know, bring, you know, at least throw the original manual in there, too. That way people can actually figure out how to play it. Yeah, so we have, so people know what's going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not going with the Jenny Wander method. <laughs> oh, I don't feel bad. That was my method for years as well. Oh, exactly. But, yeah, out of the horror-based video games on the NES, this is my favorite. Yeah, me too, 100%. 
which Nightmare on Elm Street actually gets a lot of decent reviews too, but uh, I... Yeah, it's fun, but I don't know. Something about this game, I think it's just kind of the the amount of time that I've played it. The amount of being lost, you know, the memories from playing, like, you know, all me and my cousins sitting around taking turns. Well, I don't think Nightmare on Elm Street for NES was as uh, dark as this game was. Like, Nightmare no, on Elm Street, I don't think you're, so either. you know, you're collecting, you know, dog bones. Yeah. <laughs> It's like Ooh, scary. <laughs> you got to get all of Freddy's bones. All right. Why are they all femurs? <laughs> <laughs> this is not helpful. <laughs> like he, we, we've created a big walking femur. <laughs> he did not skip leg day, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Or, or is this game like he, he's actually killing kids? Like you, you never saw that on NES. Well, that's it, right? Yeah. <laughs> And yes, was a system where you'd try to hit kids and nothing would happen. Like <laughs> Right. And, and literally at the end of a game, if you lose, you and all of your friends your are friends dead. Friends are dead. <laughs> it's like, wow, that, that's an ending. The best ending screen. <laughs> so my, my question then, now that we're discussing that, how do you think that got past Nintendo censors? I have no idea. Like, I've always kind of wondered how they got away with it. Like the entire I don't know if there game. was just somebody who was like, yo, this is cool, whatever, and signed off on it on the down low, or... I don't know, but I'm really surprised, like, going back and looking at it, that this was on the Nintendo, like... Yeah, same here, because, like, the entire game is shocking with that. It's like, you're telling me that that game over screen got through, but a lot of the other stuff that was on the NES got, you know, censored out between the Famicom to the NES release? Like, they could... Exactly. They couldn't have crosses in Castlevania. <laughs> but we can say you and all your friends are dead. <laughs> right. And even like back then, no one ever died in Nintendo. You know, you didn't kill Bowser, you defeated Bowser. Exactly, yeah. So this is such a wild difference to where to this day I'm here like, how did this get through? I know, it's crazy looking back at it. Yeah, it but was... I'm so damn glad it did. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's an amazing game. Like, if you're looking for an NES Halloween game, this is my top pick. Oh, definitely, yeah. This is one you, sh if you haven't played it, that you should definitely, I mean, prepare to get annoyed, but you should play it. <laughs> right. Uh, it's just different from every anything else in the NES. A and it is playable. It is beatable. I, I, I can't do it, but many other people can. It's hard as hell, can. but it is done. <laughs> yeah, it can be done. I watched some guy today do it without dying once. I was like, huh? Yeah, You're I don't know how sir? to pull that off. I don't either, but it was freaking amazing. Like, uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up was a lot of people complain about the map screen. Oh, I know. Do they ever? And I'm here like, this is like not too complicated to figure out. It, it's round. Which means that if you continually go one direction, eventually you're going to be going counterclockwise. So, yeah. so, so Some I people, I think, just couldn't get it. I didn't think it was that bad. Like, yeah, the first time it kind of like, wait a second. And I like look at the map, like, okay, it's a circle. So yeah, if I go right on the circle, eventually I'll be going left because it's a circle. Yeah. And then after that, it's just the trick of figuring out how to navigate the outer circle and then the uh, two inner circles. Yeah, it is confusing, though, for sure. Like on the first few times when you're trying to figure out how it works. But once you figure it out, it's not terrible. Yeah, uh, it's something that everyone complains about, and it's like, it, it'll take you, like, 30 seconds to kind of see what's going on and be like, okay. Yeah, you just got to play with it a little bit, and then you figure it out. At first, you're like, ah, but... Right. Again, I'm, like, terrible in games with maps. I just kind of do my own thing. Like, <laughs> I'll go somewhere and be like, oh, where was I before? And just get lost. <laughs> Oh, I did not uh, bring up too. There is a second alternate bad ending. I don't know if you've seen to where if um, you stay alive and keep some of the counselors alive, but you run out of kids, it's just Jason wiped out the kids. Game over. I love that. Uh, and the other thing I like is the little Jason, whatever he's been beaten sprite. Yes. He, he looks like <laughs> so a, awesome. He looks like a sad, depressed Jason. I was supposed to say sad boy Jason sitting there. <laughs> Just see him on the screen, he's like, oh, shucks. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> he makes you feel bad almost. <laughs> Poor Jason. 
I yeah, mean, poor boy. First he drowns because no one's paying attention to him, and then he wants to go get his revenge, and he finds out that his mom's dead, and... It's had a hard life, that poor Jason. Yeah. What can we do to make Jason happier? Give him more counselors to kill. <laughs> <laughs> And some bitchin' music. Because one thing I love about this game is the damn music. Yeah, it, it's very, very short, but it's fitting. Yeah. I would say to make Jason happy, sit him down and have him watch the fifth movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Because <laughs> of all the Friday the 13th movies, man, that fifth one's got to be my favorite. Oh, yeah, it's something else. <laughs> Like, they, they knew. They are like, we're going to make a B-movie, but we're going to make a, just an awesome B-movie. And that's what I love about that one, is, like, they, they know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, it's like, the earlier ones, like, they kind of skew off to where they're almost trying to be serious, but it's a B-movie. It, it's always yeah. going to be a B-movie. Then, like, that's it. once they get to the fifth one, they just got the perfect people in there, the perfect crew. They're like, we know what you're here for. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we know why you're here. <laughs> uh, so before we begin to uh, wrap things up, uh, if you would go ahead and plug your show real quick. Okay, so I do the Nocturnal Mysteries podcast. It's a podcast about the paranormal, supernatural, and mysterious. Episodes come out every two weeks. They're pretty short, so they're pretty digestible, maybe 20 to 40 minutes. I uh, can find it anywhere where you listen to podcasts. I have a bit of a backlog you can check out, too, uh, especially with spooky season coming up. Why not? Great time to listen to it. Although, in my opinion, any time is a good time to listen to it. Cause of course. Th there's so many interesting stories and tales on this podcast. It's uh, It makes you think. Yeah, it's a lot. I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, I love learning about new haunted locations and stuff like that, so... It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, every episode's a blast to listen to, and it really makes you think about, you know, what's going on there and why it's going on, which I, I think goes hand-in-hand hand with any kind of haunting story. Oh, for sure, yeah. But yeah, be sure to check out Jenny on Nocturnal Mysteries. I uh, know I listen to her on Spotify, but I think she's on pretty well all of them. Yeah, it's pretty rare. Wherever you can find podcasts, you'll find Nocturnal Mysteries. Awesome. Well, Jenny, thank you once again for taking time out of your day to talk about a game with me. I appreciate it. Buddy, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about one of my favorite games to play and some really great memories I haven't... It was really fun to sit down before we started recording and like this morning and try to remember back and think of... like It was fun to think of those family memories I haven't thought of in a long time. So thank you very much for giving me the chance to come on and talk about it. Oh, no problem. Like I said, if there's ever a game that you want to talk about, just uh, hit me up and uh, we'll get you back on. For sure. It's been a lot of fun. All right. Have a good one. You too, buddy. Thank you. Thank you once again for joining myself as well as Jenny for another episode of Afterglow. Uh, if you're looking for other stuff to listen to and maybe something that fits the spooky season a bit more, be sure to check out the Nocturnal Mysteries podcast where Jenny will cover uh, haunting a specific location, sometimes just uh, some stories. She did one I remember about a Canadian haunting I thought was really, really good. And uh, because I've never been up there before, I found it really, really interesting. And she actually covered a uh, haunting from my college hometown, too, in Evansville, Indiana, recently that I really enjoyed. All of her episodes are really good, so be sure to check out Nocturnal Mysteries. 
And after you're done with that, if you want to go back to some gaming stuff, be sure to check out Secret Levels as well as Lost and Gone podcast. Uh, two big friends of the show. They have helped out with the show significantly, uh, doing both the intro, outro music, as well as the show logo. And we have plenty more friends of the show. You can check out in the notes below our link tree, which I've reorganized a little bit. So the link tree now, it has all my stuff like usual. It's got links to everywhere you can listen. It's got links to the Patreon, the Discord, the merch store. But all of the Friends of the Show links will be down there as well now. Uh, There'll be a Friends of the Show section and all of their links will be there as well. So if you're looking for other stuff to listen to, that'll be the perfect place to check that out. And speaking of more Friends of the Show, let's listen to uh, them right now. And that way you can check out some of their shows as well. Hello and welcome to the Reviews Brothers. It's me, Martin, and you can join me on YouTube where I have hundreds of videos covering a huge range of video game topics. I've got top 10s, hidden gems, console focused A to Zs, as well as dedicated videos to topics like Doom Mods, 3D platform games, ninja games, pirate games, and more. I cover all systems from Commodore 64 right up to modern consoles. Nothing gaming is off the table. So be sure to search for the Reviews Brothers on YouTube as well as on Instagram and TikTok for hundreds of retro and modern video game reviews. For more than 15 years, Retro Gaming Roundup has been the center of your retro gaming universe with top 10s, interviews, game reviews, news, and much more from all over the globe. Be sure to tune in every month for the new dose of Retro Gaming Roundup. That's RetroGamingRoundup.com. Hey there, Afterglow gang. Keith Gasper here. The host of what I'm told is the number one retro gaming podcast available on the internet, The Main Quest Podcast. The Main Quest is an ongoing project wherein I'm replaying the entire library of games that I grew up with, sharing my memories associated with those games, and deciding if that bit of media still holds up today. Every episode I am often, but not always, joined by a friend as we discuss the gameplay, presentation, and most importantly, where that game came from, who took part in its inception, and what kind of legacy it left behind, if any, because honestly not every game can be Tetris. It's not enough to walk away from each episode having had fun, but hopefully you also learned something about your favorite video game, or maybe even a game that you've never even heard of. So come on over, have a listen to the extensive backlog of Main Quest Podcast, available of course on all major podcasting platforms, and look out for brand new episodes coming in 2025. And of course, hey, always remember, it's okay to like a video game. Hello, my name is Aaron. I'm one half of Super Pod Saga, a topical variety video game podcast fueled entirely by nostalgia and unleaded gasoline. Super Pod Saga, we discuss a different video game topic each and every week. We have new episodes every single Monday covering a different video game topic. More than anything, we want to entertain our listeners and make you feel like you're one of the boys, like you're hanging out at a campfire with some of your best zany caffeine powered buddies and just talking about your favorite games and all that stuff stop on down to super pod saga it's on every podcatcher there is if it's not let me know and we'll get on it again super pod saga stop on by